there's a new thing happening. OurSpirit.online is bringing the best in gospel music that is all gospel, all local, and all the time. Go to OurSpirit.online and download the free app today. OurSpirit.online. Join us for our next Power Hour on Saturday, August the 22nd. We'll be heading out to a different location this time to Russell's Ice Cream right here on Chilai Avenue. Mm. Meet us at 1 o'clock p.m. Bring your lawn chairs as usual, but this time we don't have an end time. And even if you can't eat ice cream, please come out and join us anyhow. We'll see you there. Bye. Hello, Love Fellowship Worship Center. This is Pastor Cooper here, and I just have a few announcements for you today. So what's up, Love Fellowship Worship Center? We have, first of all, I want to thank you for all of your support in yesterday's rally to end racism. Thank you so much for coming out and showing your support. You know, it is time for us to learn how to live together and love one another. That's what we have to do in this day. I also have some other things that are happening today at six o'clock on BET is the Stellar Awards. The Stellar Awards, the Gospel Music Stellar Awards and your pastor, James Cooper and the Our Spirit family uh, is being recognized. So we're being recognized as one of the top four nominees for the radio station of the year. And we hope that we will win and be the top radio station of the year. So pray for us and watch uh, the BET Stellar Awards because I did uh, I did record a message and hopefully we'll see it on there because we will win. Um, but I encourage you to check that out. If nothing else, you'll enjoy some really really good gospel music and uh, have a wonderful time celebrating uh, the Stellar Awards. All right, all of your great artists will be on there. Also, I want to let you know about another event that is happening and it's called Our Praise Gospel Celebration. It's brought to you by ourspirit.online. We've got a lineup of some of the best creative and gifted uh, gospel artists in the upstate Rochester area. Here's just a sum of, some of them. Uh, uh, Koi Duncan, uh, Serena Young, Samuel Oliver, LaQuisha Bridges-Smith, Divine Nature. Um, oh, man, it's, it's a lot more. There's um, about 13 different uh, groups and, and soloists that will uh, be bringing you their ministry. Uh, but this is on the 30th of August, it's Sunday, the 30th of August at 6 p.m. And it's going to be going live on all of the social media network. So it'll be on Facebook and YouTube are the primary, but we will also be feeding to some others as well. So get ready for that. And we hope that you will really, really enjoy some of our local 
local uh, gifted uh, musicians and singers. And also, I have some really, 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 really good news for you today. And that is, Jesus is still the answer for the problems today. Yes, I'm so grateful that we serve a God who is all-knowing and all-wise. And whatever you're dealing with, I just encourage you to take it to him. God bless you, everyone. Now, let's get right into worship. Lord, we just thank you for just one more opportunity, Father, to come before you and to just be in your presence, knowing that you are the one and only wise God. And Lord, we just thank you for everything that you've done, Lord. Lord, we thank you because you are the great I am, and there is none other above you, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, Father, for allowing us to wake up this morning, Father, and breathe the fresh breath that you have given us. Lord, we thank you for being renewed in your spirit, oh God. Lord, we thank you for providing all of our needs, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Father, for being in your house. Just one more time, Jesus. Lord, I just ask, Father, that as we go through our worship service and as we listen to the word, Father, that we, Father, would be lifted up, Father. And as we come before your throne, O oh Lord, Lord, I ask that you pour out in us, Father, that we may pour out to your people, O oh God. And Father, everyone that is listening, that can hear, Father, this broadcast, Father, we ask that you strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen them where they are weak, Lord, and lift them up where they may be torn down, Father. Lord, take away sadness and depression, Father. Look down on the sick, Father, and the shut-in, God. Lord, give them new hope, Father, because you are alive and well. You are not a dead God, Father, and you are still performing miracles, Father. Give them hope, Father. Give them hope for this day, Father, even though we don't understand what's going on in the world today and everything seems unclear, God. But Lord, you have clarity. And Father, we ask that you just give us the knowledge and revelation to know what to do during these times. Father, draw us closer to you, closer through your word, oh God. And Father, right now we just seal this prayer in your precious blood, oh Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 With that being said, we're going to give them praise. Come on and lift them up. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we love you. Oh, Lord. How great is our God.
and search the earth below, but there's no one. There is no one, no one. I can search the heavens high. I can search. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We are so very, very grateful for our most excellent worship team. And that last song that Denise did, boy, that's one that, oh, gosh, I just love that song. 
because the Lord is faithful, and I'm so grateful for him. Thank you so much for those of you who are here today. Thank you so much for coming out tonight and today and every other day that you come. Thank you so much for being here in the tabernacle today, in the tabernacle today. I believe that the Lord has a word for us today because we have certainly been on a journey. We have certainly been on a journey since, since March, and certainly we have experienced some ups and some downs and some twists and some turns, and I believe that we're still on the very much in this journey, but I also feel very, very clearly in my spirit that we're at a place now where we're starting to come out of this wilderness place that we have been in. I believe that we're coming out of place, out of this place that we've been wandering around trying to figure out what's going on and what's the next thing to happen and what's going to happen next. I believe that we are coming out of that place and now the Lord is really pushing us and urging us to now plan for, for the future. You know, when the Israelites came out of Egypt, they complained and complained in the wilderness but I'm grateful that the Lord didn't send them back because he had a greater place in store for them. And I believe likewise with Love Fellowship Worship Center and all of the churches around the globe, I believe that we'll never go back to exactly the way that we were, but the Lord has a promised land in store for us. And I believe that that is the journey that we are truly on. And I also believe that the future belongs to those who prepare. I also believe that as we go through this journey, as we follow the Holy Spirit, he will take us to the place where he wants us to be, even though in that process we may feel like we are lost. Even in that process, we may, may feel as if there's no point in going on even in the process, we may feel like there's no hope. I believe that the Lord is taking us some, somewhere. And I believe that what we're experiencing now is the process of coming out of the wilderness. And that's not always easy. But I just want to spend a few minutes telling you a story that I read in the book of Genesis. And so those of you who have your Bibles, if you don't mind, just turning to the book of Genesis, and when you get to the book of Genesis, I want you to turn to the 12th verse, and we're going we're gonna to plant it right there, because I believe that the Lord has a word. And by the way, this word is not just for Love Fellowship or Worship Center. It's not just for Rochester. But I believe that this is a prophetic word for the church. And I believe that there are great things in store for us. But I also believe that there is a process that we will go through in order for the Lord to get us where we really need to be. I also believe that this is not just something that happened instantaneously. I believe that the warning signs have been around for a long time, but we were so stuck in our tradition that we weren't willing to make the changes necessary that the Lord was telling us that we needed to make. And now we're in a situation where we have to make the adjustments, where we have to make the shift, where we have to make the change because we can no longer remain the same. So Genesis, the 12th chapter, Genesis, the 12th chapter, Genesis, the 12th chapter. I'm giving you all a chance to Find it here in the church and also those of you who are at home or on your couch. Get up, get up, get up. Go find your Bible and your Bible book as we read this scripture. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to share your word with these, your people. 
We thank you for the word that you have planted in my heart, the seed that you had given me, Lord, that the produce will impact and, and benefit all of those who hear this today. Lord, we thank you for being such an awesome God that you chose us in this time, in this crisis, to be the church that makes the shift to where you would really have us to be. Lord, we ask that you would help us be more effective and efficient, Lord, and more productive as a church in moving your kingdom forward and winning, winning souls to Christ, oh God. We thank you that you are shifting us and you are pushing us to higher heights, and we are so very, very grateful, God. You promised us that your word would never return void, that it would, would, would achieve its intended purpose in those who believe, oh God. Let someone hear this message that sets them on the path that you have created for them and the churches to move in the direction that you would have us to go. And we are forever grateful, oh God, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, Lord. And we wait with great anticipation and excitement about what there is to come, oh God. Let this word saturate the world today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's take a look at Genesis, the 12th chapter, and I hope y'all don't mind if I teach this a little bit, because I believe that there are some, some nuggets here that we are going to need as we go forward. Genesis, the 12th chapter, and we're going to start right in the first verse. And as a matter of fact, there is a, a, a tie here all the way back to the beginning of the year. Matter of fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, back to the very first word that was given in this church at the beginning of this year. I believe it was. Either, either it was the last word that we heard in 2019 or the first word that we heard in 2020. It ties back to that very, very closely. Genesis, the 12th chapter and the first verse. And the story begins like this. Now the Lord had said to Abram, he says, get out of your country from your family from your father's house to a land that I will show you. He says, I need for you to leave the place where you are comfortable. I need for you to leave the place where you have a reputation. I need you to leave the place where everybody around you supports you and makes you feel good. I need you to leave all of the security that you have had. And I need for you to now go to a land that I haven't even shown you yet. I want you to go to a place where you don't know exactly where it is that you're going, but I need for you to go from where you are and all of your accoutrements and all of the luxuries and all of the things that you are comfortable with. I want you to leave that place and I want you to go somewhere that I'm going to show you when you get on the journey. I want you to leave all that you all that you have come accustomed to, all of the traditions that come along with this place, I want you to leave because as you leave, I have a promise in store for you. So here's the promise. Here's the promise. And there are seven promises that I've, I've, I've learned in this passage because as I mentioned earlier, I believe that what the Lord has in store for us, and not just us, keep, keep in mind, this is a prophetic word for the nations. What the Lord has in store for us is greater than from which we came. Because he tells us right here beginning in verse 2, he says, the first thing is, he says, I'm going to make you a great nation. Not where you are, not with the resources that you currently have, not with the loved ones that you currently have, not in your father's house. I need for you to leave there because I'm going to take you to a place where the first one of the first, first promises that I have for you, easy for you to say, and the first promise is that I'm going to make you a great nation, but not here, not here. 
He says the second thing is this. He says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you beyond what you have. I'm going to bless you where I send you. And your blessing is, it's not here. It's not here. It's not here. You may have thought that this was your blessing. He said, but you have no idea uh, how I'm going to bless you in that place that you don't know nothing about. Third thing, he says, I'm going to make your name great. When people say your name, they're going to know who you are and who you represent. I'm going to make it known, the blessings that I have given to you, I'm going to make them known everywhere you go, but not here. But not, not, not here. Not here. This is not your destiny. This is not the place where you're supposed to stay. This is just a place that you're supposed to pass through and that you ought to go to someplace else. But I got, I'm going to bless you, but not, not here. Not here. He says, number three, uh, he says, I'm going to make you a great name. Number four, he says, and, and not only am I going to bless you, but because of your obedience to leave your comfort zone and go outside of your comfort zone, I'm going to bless, I'm going to, I'm going to make it so that you will be a blessing. So every place that you go, when you go there, they're going to be blessed as a result of the blessing that is on you. But in order for them to be blessed as a result of you, you got to go because it's not here. It's not here. It's not here. Then, then, then he said, number five. So, so you got number one. He said, I'm going to make your name great. Number two, he said, I'm going to bless you. Number three, I'm going to make your name great. And then I'm going to, uh, and then you will be a blessing to others. Then number five, he says, I'm going to bless those <coughs> who bless you. I'm going to bless those who bless you. Yeah. Those who receive you and see the gifts that are placed on you. He says, I'm going to bless them because they blessed, because they bless you. They're going to bless you, but not here. But not here. Not, not, not here. Not here. Not here. I'm going to bless those who bless you. But not here. You got to go to the place that I tell you to go, but you don't know where you're going, and you're wondering where you're going. Why me? Why couldn't I just stay where I was before? It was all right. But the Lord is saying, I have greater for you, but not, but not here. Somebody, somebody's hearing this and seeing this. And they're saying in their spirit, not here, not here, not, not here, not here, not here. He says, he says, he says, he says number five, he says, I'm going to bless those who bless you. So, so number one, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to make, a, make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. He says, and I, and you shall be a blessing. And then I'm going to bless those who bless you. And why, by the way, number six, I'm going to curse those who curse you. So when they try to come up against you, they're going to fail because what's in you is greater than what is in the world. So, so they might come against you, and if they curse you and say the, say the bad things about you, the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do him no harm. He says, listen, don't mess with mine. Don't mess with mine. So I'm going to curse those who curse you, but not here. But not here. So, so he says, so first he says, he's going to make you a great nation. He says, I'm going to bless you. He says, I'm going to make your name great. And I'm saying, and you should be a blessing. And I, and those who bless you, he says, I'll bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. And then number seven, he says, and you, all the families of the earth will be, will be blessed. So as a result of the blessing that the Lord has for you, it's going to trickle down, not just for the ones 
who are around you, but it's going to have a wave effect and reach, the, uh, reach around the world. Why? Because you're going to be blessed. Now, now again, see, 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 don't get it twisted. I'm not talking about love fellowship, but I'm talking about love fellowship. I'm not just talking about Rochester, but, but I'm talking about Rochester. I'm not talking about New York, but I'm just New York, but I'm, I'm talking about New York. I'm not just talking about the U.S., but I'm talking about the U.S. I'm not just talking about the world. I'm talking about the world. Because he says, one, he says, I'm going to make you a great nation. He says, I will bless you. I will make your name great, and, I will, and, and you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And number seven, it says, you and, your, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. But then after the promise and the command came, the journey, because in verse 4 it says, So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed Haran. So there's a blessing in this. You got to hear this. You got to hear this because, see, what the Lord is saying here is he made a special note to say that he was 75 years old. I know some of y'all watch this. Well, I'm 75. Well, yeah, I understand that. But, you're, but I'm saying that you are 75. What the word is trying to get you to understand is don't count out your ability to be a blessing and to minister. You're not too old to get started. You're not too sick to start. You're not too young to start. You, 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 he's saying he, he wanted to make a point here to say he was 75 years old just to make a point to let you know that the Lord still has a lot of good stuff in you, regardless of what you might see as a drawback or maybe you feel like there's certain things you cannot do or certain things that you are not good at. But the Lord is saying here, I'm calling out 75 because I needed you to understand that Abram was in his latter years, but yet he was going to be a blessing. And I'm here to tell you today, don't count yourself out just yet because the Lord has not counted you out. He yet expects expects for you to be a minister and an evangelist to the nations, even though you may be old, even though you may be young, even though you may be black, or even though you may be white, it does not matter. He said, Abram, don't worry about what, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what might hold you back. Just be obedient and step outside of your comfort zone, and I'm going to bless you, but but not here, but not here. He says in verse five, it says, it says, then Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people who they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. But then it says, Abraham passed through the land to the place of Chesham. Hmm. We heard about Chesham. Chesham is that place where it requires a paradigm shift. It requires a place where you've got to make a change. It requires, it's a place where you, it requires you to rethink your strategy and implement something a little bit different because what has brought you to this place is not what's going to take you to the place. It says, but he came to the land of Chesham as far as the, uh, the Terbarath tree in Marat, Mara. It says, and the Canaanites, were, they were in the land. Now, 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 if the Canaanites are there, intelligent, industrious, smart people, they're already in the land. They tell me that the Canaanites were the first ones to create the alphabet, a way to communicate in writing with letters. How are we going to go take that land 
when they are already there. But somewhere else in the Bible, it does tell us that he is, he is, he is, he's storing up the treasures of the wicked for the righteous. Yeah, he's storing it up, getting it ready for you and getting it ready for me. But not, not here. Not here. Now here, then, then it goes on, it goes on, goes on in verse, in verse seven. And I'm going to stop here. It says, then the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your descendants, I'm going to give you this land. Now it says there that he's going to give them this land. I need you to understand that I serve a God that knows the difference between cash and a mortgage. I serve a God that if he's going to give you something, when it says give, it means without debt and without repentance. When he says he's going to give them the land, that means he's going to give them the land and they're not going to owe anybody for the land. Because I serve a selfish God who will get the glory. He says, he says, he says, he says, he says, he says, then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, uh, to you and your descendants, I will give this land. But then this is the part that I want to get to. He says, he says, he says, and there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Just a key verse. It says, and then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Let, 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 let. But see, this altar kind of caused me to look a little bit deeper because I needed to understand some things about this altar because the altar was placed there because of the promises that were made to God. The, 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 the altar was made there as a visible, uh, uh, as a visible, as a visible reminder of the promises that were made, and so, 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 so we find that Abraham erected an altar, and we we find that Isaac erected an altar. We see that Jacob made an altar. We see that. Moses made an altar, so there must be something significant about the altar. So, so what is an altar to the Lord? An altar is a raised area. It can be in a house of worship or even in a home where, there, where we recognize the goodness of God and we make our sacrifices. It is a prominent in the Bible as God's table, a sacrificial place of sacrifices of gifts given up to God. When we look at the altar, we look at why do we need an altar. We need altars to meet God and encounter his his presence. We need an altar because we need altars and it gives us a focal point in bringing our worship together with God. We need that altar right there to never let us forget about the promises that were made. We need an altar. We need an altar. But not here. <laughs> we need an altar but not here you see one of the things that i recognize as i looked at abraham isaac jacob and moses and the altars that they built none of the altars were created for the past none of the altars were made to commemorate what was the altars were always made in recognition of what the Lord was about to do. It was always about the promises that the Lord had made because they realized that they wouldn't they wouldn't go back to where they were because the Lord has something better 
in store for them ahead. I'm so grateful that I serve a God who is not stuck in the past, but yet prepares us for the future. I'm here to tell you, Love Fellowship Worship Center and anybody else who will hear, the Lord is not desiring of us to go back to the way it was. The Lord has so much greater in store for us ahead. You know, every church has a mission and a vision and, you know, goals and all that kind of stuff. I mean, all, and it's always something different, always something different. It seems like sometimes we try to get so clever in designing our vision for our church. But in reality, all of those visions really reflect God's vision for the church. And that is to reach the lost and bring them to a relationship with Christ. (laughs) If we did that and nothing else, I believe that on the last day, the Lord would say, well done. Well done. Well done, love, fellowship, worship, center. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of the Father. I just believe if that, if, if all this other fancy stuff is great. But at the end of the day, I believe that the Lord has something greater for you and for me, and for us, <laughs> but not here. Amen? Not here. Not here. Not here. Not here. I believe that all that has happened and all that is happening to the church is not bad. It's just letting us know that we can no longer build altars to celebrate the past because our future is not here. Our future is ahead in a land that the Lord has promised us. And when we get to that land, When we get to that place on this journey, (laughs) that place, where is that place? I don't know, that place. (laughs) Yeah, that place. Yeah, where does, how do you get to that place? Well, I can tell you how to get there. You follow Christ every step of the way. One step after another, after another, and just say, Lord, where would you? Where would you like for me to go? And just like he did for Abram, which we are the seed of Abraham, right? Let me just tie it all back. It says that I will make you a great nation. It says, I'll bless you. I'll make you a great name. And you shall be blessed. He says, I'll bless those who bless you and I'll I'll fight the battles for you because I'll curse those who curse you. And you and all your families of the earth shall be blessed. So, Love Fellowship Worship Center and all those who would be watching this morning. The Lord has something very special for you and for me and for all of us. And after all of that, I'd be missing the mark if I didn't offer Jesus to you today. Because somebody's watching this 
somebody has experienced this worship that's just wondering, Lord, where do I go? I got questions in my mind. I've got questions in my heart, and I just need to know where do I go from here? Well, it's not difficult. There's just a few questions that I would ask. And the first question is, are you a sinner? Are you a sinner? The Bible says that we are all sinners saved by grace. The Bible says that if we say that we are not sin, not if we say that we are not in sin, then we're not, we're lying to ourselves. And then the next question is, do you want to be forgiven for your sins? And do you believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again? And finally, are you willing to surrender your life to Christ? Yeah, you've tried it your way. You've, you've done it your way for a long time. You've done a lot of stuff. You've had a lot of fun trying to figure out how to navigate through this life. And the Lord is saying, hey, like Dr. Phil says, how's that working out for you? Because the Lord has greater for you. And then my final question is, are you ready to accept Jesus into your heart and into your life? And if if the answer is yes, I just want to pray a simple prayer for you that can literally change your life for the better. Yes, I want to change your life for the better through Jesus Christ. And so if you don't mind, just bow your head and, and close your eyes and we're going to pray this prayer of salvation with you. And those of you who are already in the body of Christ, I need for you to be praying right where you are, regardless of where you are right now watching this, whether you're here in the building or whether you're, you're at home somewhere, whether you're at work or in your car, where you're, whether you're on the bus or on the airplane. I don't know where else you could be watching this. I don't care whether you're in Rochester, New York, the United States, or any place around the world. Because, see, I serve an omnipresent God who is able to be here and there all at the same time. And he never loses his power. I'm so grateful. So those who are in the body of Christ, I need for you to be praying right now that for that soul that's looking and searching for an answer. And those of you who would say yes to Jesus today, just pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you and I want forgiveness for all of my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. Father, I give my life to you to do with as you wish. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. This I ask in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to, to God in the most high. I thank you, Lord, that your word is reaching around the globe right now touching somebody's heart somebody's son and somebody's daughter somebody's husband somebody's wife somebody's friend and somebody's neighbor ah let this word transform this life and we thank you oh god and we honor you today in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me today and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, there's a couple things I need for you to do. The first thing that I want you to do is I want you to find somebody that you trust and tell them 
of the commitment you have just made today. It could be a mother, a father, a friend, maybe even a pastor, but someone that you trust. I want you to make this confession with the fruit of your lips, out of your mouth. I want you to confess to somebody today that you prayed this prayer of salvation and ask God to enter into your heart. If you could do that today, that's your first step. The second thing that I want you to do is I want you to find and connect with a church where you can grow and develop and create relationships in that church. If you're here in Rochester, we'd love for you to be a part of Love Fellowship Worship Center. If you're outside of our immediate area, we'd love for you to be a part of Love Fellowship Worship Center. If you're around the globe, on the other side of the globe, we'd love for you to be a part of Love Fellowship Worship Center. Simply call us. Simply call us at 585-479-8900 and let us know that you want to be a part of this church and we will take it from there. If you want to be a part of another church, just give us a call. We'll help you find another church. Maybe you want something different. I happen to be a little bit biased about Love Fellowship Worship Center, but if you want to be a part of another church, we will help you find a church of your liking where you can connect and grow because this is not about Love Fellowship Worship Center. This is about building the kingdom of God, building the kingdom of God. So wherever you are, call us at 585-479-8900. If you want to reach us by email, just send your email to spiritofrochester at gmail.com. And we will make sure that someone connects with you expeditiously so that we can welcome you into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah and amen. I'm so grateful, so grateful that you joined with us today. I pray that you heard something, that you experienced something or that you felt something that touched you in that very innermost part of your spirit. Because the Lord has something great for you and something great for me, but not here. <laughs> Hallelujah. He has greater for us in the land that he will show us. Thank you so much for being with us today. I ask that you not go anywhere. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Matter of fact, go ahead and grab the kids because next we do have our children's church. And I don't want them to miss that. And I know that children's church says it's for children. But I got to be honest with you. I'm really, really enjoying the lessons on children's church. So I encourage you, grab the kids around. It'll be starting in about two, three minutes. We will start our children's church, and we encourage you to gather the kids and be a part of that as well. God bless you. Once again, thank you for all of those who are here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with us today. I love you so much, and I can't wait till we're all together once again. God bless you, everyone. Have an incredible week. And may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. And may heaven smile on you and grant you peace. God bless you, everyone. On behalf of pastor and lead servant James Cooper and the Love Fellowship Worship Center family, we pray that you have enjoyed our virtual worship experience. If you would like to support the mission and ministry of LFWC, there are a number of ways to do so. First and foremost, please pray for us. Second, you can safely donate by mobile app with Givelify from your Android or Apple device. Third, you can send donations via mail to Love Fellowship Worship Center, 
740 Marshall Road, Rochester, New York, 14624. We appreciate you visiting with us today, and we hope that you will be with us again next week. Good morning, LF Kids. It's true that we can trust God and his plans that he has for us. Sometimes that can be a little tricky, especially not knowing what great plans God has for us. Esther's story is a great example of how God moves through us in unexpected ways. As we read her story in the book of... That's right, Esther will discover more about her story. Everybody, it's me, Jacob, and today I'm here to talk to you about creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. There are so many different artistic ways to be creative, and today I hope to demonstrate just how creative I am in the culinary arts. Now you might be thinking, oh, hey Jacob, what are the culinary arts? <laughs> And that's totally okay because I had to look it up too. I had no idea. So allow me to elucidate. I had to look that word up too. Yeah. Okay. Basically, it's this. I'm making chocolate. Yes! You see, I started thinking. I know I'm creative because I was created in the image of God. But what if drawing and sculpting and, you know, art stuff isn't my thing. What if chocolate making was my thing? My purpose. And time for the last thing. The cocoa powder. In my research, I learned that chocolate comes from a bean that grows from the cacao tree, which technically means that Chocolate's a vegetable. True story. Oh, this looks so good. Bon Appetit. That is so good. I think I've really discovered what my purpose is. Chocolatey goodness. It's like in today's story. God had a purpose for a woman named Esther, and you're going to find out if she discovered her purpose before it was too late. Time to check the old recipe book. Oh, let's see. Chill for four hours. Chill for four hours. No, I'm kidding, obviously. It means to put it in the freezer. Just, <laughs> duh. I had to look it up. And I spent two hours in the freezer before I realized that it meant the chocolate and not me. So, see you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Esther. Esther was the queen of Persia. Wait, what? Queen? Esther didn't become queen in the usual way. See, her father wasn't a king, and she wasn't from a noble family. It's just me and cousin Mordecai. In fact, Esther was Jewish. Many of God's people had been captured and brought to Babylon when their home, Judah, was conquered. Then Babylon was taken over by Persia. So Esther grew up in a land that wasn't her own. 
When Esther's parents died, her cousin Mordecai raised her as his very own daughter. Always remember what our scriptures say. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength. One day, a new king named Xerxes came to power in Persia. He was so impulsive that he actually fired his queen, Vashti, simply for refusing to show up at a wild party. She will never see me again. When Xerxes had finally calmed down, he had realized he now had no queen. I have no queen. He would have to find a new one. I must find a new one. So the king decided to hold a contest. He ordered his officials to gather the most beautiful young women in the land and put them through an entire year of beauty treatments. Esther was one of those girls chosen. Cousin Mordecai, what do I do? Don't tell anyone you're from a Jewish family. I have chosen my new queen. <clears throat> Drum roll. My new queen is Esther. Mm -hmm. Me? Assume the queenly royal crown. I might have to resize it. Just as Xerxes had so impulsively switched queens, he also promoted a royal official named Haman higher than all of the other nobles in the kingdom. Bow to me, you fools! Haman was delighted when all of the officials outside the palace bowed low before him. When he discovered that Mordecai refused to bow, he was enraged. You have to bow! Somebody make him bow! Haman was so angry, he made a plan to destroy not only Mordecai, but all the Jews in the land. He laid it out for the king. Your Majesty, these Jews live differently than everyone else. They don't obey your laws. Fiddlesticks, that's just wrong. Precisely, give the order to destroy them. Consider it done. Xerxes agreed to the terrible decree. Messengers took the letter all over the kingdom. Hear ye, hear ye. On the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, all Jews are to be killed. Hear ye, hear ye. When Mordecai and the other Jews discovered the horrible news, they dressed in rough clothing and wept bitterly. Mordecai sent a message to Esther in the palace, telling her what Haman had done. You must ask the king to save our people. Esther was devastated. She sent a response to her cousin. No one can come before the king unless he sends for them. If I do it, I'll die, unless he reaches out his gold scepter to me. Mordecai sent his answer right back. You may not escape, even though you're queen. Who knows? It's possible that you became queen for just a time like this. He's right. Here, tell this to Mordecai. Gather all the Jews. Don't eat anything for three days. I and my servants will fast too. Then I'll go to the king. Esther faced an impossible dilemma, but she took three days to prepare her heart and her mind. Bring my most beautiful royal robes. Heart racing, Esther entered the throne room. Across the long hall, she saw the king seated high on the throne. Breathless, she waited for him to see her. Please, please, please. The king looked up, his dark eyes locked on Esther's face. And then he smiled. He reached out his golden scepter. Thank God. What is it, Queen Esther? I'll give you anything, up to half my kingdom. Esther could have made her request right away, but she knew she would have a better chance if she made the king curious. King Xerxes, if it pleases you, Come to a feast I've prepared today. Oh, and bring Haman. Consider it done. Esther created an elaborate feast for the king and his number two official. <laughs> Look at me, you peasants, invited to the queen's banquet. At the meal, King Xerxes once again tried to discover what Esther wanted. I'll give you anything up to half my kingdom. Once again, Esther held her ground and waited for the perfect moment. 
I'd like you and Haman to come to another feast tomorrow. Then I'll answer your question. The king agreed, and Haman spent the whole evening bragging to all of his friends. You guys, the queen thinks I am the bum. (laughs) But the second feast was a different story. As before, Esther prepared an incredible meal. Both Haman and the king were quick to dig in. What do you want me to do for you? I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Esther took a deep breath. Something told her this was the right moment. Your majesty, let me live. Please spare my people. We have been sold to be destroyed. Haman paled and choked on his fillet, but the king's face flushed red with rage. Who is the man who has dared to do such a thing? Esther turned her gaze on Haman. Haman is the one. In a panic, Haman threw himself at the queen. Totally didn't mean it. Please, please, please let me live. You dare attack the queen? Take him away. That very night, Haman was killed, and the king created a new order that would allow the Jews to be saved. We will celebrate this day with great joy. God had given Esther a surprising position in a foreign nation. And when the time was right, she would use all she had been given to save her people. God always has a purpose. He had a purpose for Queen Esther when he put her in the right place at the right time to save her people. He had a purpose when he sent Jesus to pay for the sins of the world. And here's something you may not know. God made you for a purpose. It's true. Now, you may not have to save a bunch of people from total destruction. I don't know, or maybe you will. Who knows what God has planned for you? But I do know God has a plan and a purpose for your life, whether it be big or small. So think about it. What's your purpose? Is there something you like to do more than anything else? Like baking, or organizing, or juggling. Maybe what you like to do has something to do with your purpose. Or what about this? Is there something that you care about more than anything else? Like animals, or taking care of people, or keeping the planet clean? Maybe those things have something to do with your purpose. Whatever it is, here's the one thing to remember. God created you for a purpose. Actually, I think it would be safe to say purposes. Maybe it's something giant, like Esther. Or maybe something simple, like chocolates. Mm, 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 mm. Didn't get it. So close, gonna keep trying. Yes! Purpose! I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna 
wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna thank you, cause everything you made is so good. Hey guys, so Esther wasn't the most likely choice to become queen, but God had a very important purpose for her. When the time was right, she used her position that God had given her to help save her people. God has a purpose for each one of us. It might not be clear exactly what it is right away, but he does have a plan and you can trust that he does have a purpose for you. There's a reason why he's given you certain talents and opportunities and of course your creativity, so you guys can help make a difference each and every day. So let's pray and ask God to help us live out the purpose and plan he has for our lives. Dear God, thank you for creating each one of us with a purpose. Help us to keep following you and following your plans for our lives. Help us to make the wise choice and choose to live your way each and every day. We know that you've placed us in different situations for a reason, so we can use the creativity you've given us to help others. Help us to trust you and make the most of every opportunity you give us. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you all have a very good week. Bye!